Welcome to the EOB podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new opening this week. I'm Ben No, and joining me is Sen Duong. Hey, Sen, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So、um, last weekend we have、uh, two new wide releases: the Magnificent Seven. It is the remake uh, of, uh, I guess, a remake of Kira Kawasawa's The Seven Samurai.、Mm-hmm. Um, this new one stars、uh, Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Chris Pratt. And others, a lot of people, and then we have the、uh, Warner Brothers Animation Storks, which is targeted at kids and the family audience. And、um, you know, we made some predictions, and let's see how we did. Yes,、um, just want to note that、uh, the Magnificent Seven is a remake of a remake. Right, right. Remember the original, going back to the source, is a Japanese samurai film. <laughs> yes, and then it was remade in the U.S. as the Magnificent Seven. Uh, which this one is a remake of, right? Right, which is cowboys and you know the wild wild west. Yes. Yeah, guns instead of swords. <laughs> okay, let's see how we did. Okay, sure. Okay, so、um, we both had the movie、uh, to open in the forty-five million range because we thought Chris Pratt would、uh, add you know ten extra million to、uh, Denzel's you know average box office opening for action thriller with Antoine Fuqua directing. All、oh, right, his movies,、uh, at least that in that genre, op- usually open is in the mid thirties, right? Yeah. And we thought that hey, maybe with the addition of Chris Pratt and others,、mm-hmm. <laughs> don't forget the others. Yeah. <laughs> that it might、uh, get a, a bump in the box office, and it is an action movie, something that's different,、mm-hmm. uh, not uh, s- not superheroes,、uh, not world destruction,、mm-hmm. and then the story, you know, the Seven Samurai story, you know, can fail, right? Yeah. And、um, it did. It Did a little bit below what we had it. Not just that, I think it did a little bit below what the analysts、um, have predicted too. I think most analysts were predicting、uh, in our range.、Mm-hmm. It's a good opening for Denzel Washington movie, but I think most people Wait, like let's, us. Let's, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. We spoke a lot a long time without actually saying the opening figure. <laughs> okay. So be- before we move on, how about you tell us what the movie opened to? Okay, the Magnificent Seven rose thirty-five million、uh, over the weekend. You and I were predicting about forty-five. Most、mm-hmm. people in the industry were predicting around that figure too, at least in the forties. I think mainly because of the you know addition of Chris Pratt to the cast. You know, we thought he would bring a little extra to the Denzel the Washington and Tom Fuqua team up. It ended up just doing the usual Denzel Washington. Number on a budget of ninety million is a is a solid figure, but I think everyone was expecting a little bit more. Well, do you think it's the reviews? It only has、uh, about sixty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and the cinema score is a、uh, A minus. I mean, I think those are solid critical hit. Yeah, th- but you don't expect this to be a critical hit because number one is a remake of a remake of a remake,、mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know Antoine Fuqua's movies is like sixty percent is kind of like in the high range of his kind of movies, and for an action thriller, the sixty percent range was actually kind of on the high side. I wasn't expecting this to be like in the eighties or nineties. So well, I mean, you add a couple of these people, right? I mean, these actors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have Denzel, you know. You have Chris Pratt. You have Ethan Hawke, right? You、yeah. have、uh, Vincent there or no frill. I mean, Chris Pratt is not a critical darling. Ethan Hawke is a critical darling. Critics like him. His movies tend to be、uh, well reviewed, especially the ones that he does with Richard Linklater. Uh huh. But then you know, this is Denzel Washington doing an Antoine Fuqua movie, which can only be so.、Uh, the critical reaction can be only so high. <laughs> yeah, you can only、yeah. lift the movie so much.、Right? Yeah. I mean, based on who's doing it, you know, who, who's directing. Yeah, and Chris <laughs> Pratt, you know, he's a. I won't say he's a critic's darling. He's more a guy who does fun movies. Ethan Hawke and Denzel usually do good movies. I mean, not not just good movies, but well reviewed movies. But you know you have Antoine Fuqua, the director not known for directing critical darlings. Let's put it this way. All、oh, right, right. He's pretty much a pope director, right? He direct pope stuff, you know, action movies,、yeah. and all, all this stuff.、Um, yeah. You know, not exactly targeting toward the、um, uh, the, the Oscars. Uh, uh, you know, voters, the Oscar voters, right? Yeah. <laughs> So you know the 60% range, I thought was actually pretty good.、Uh, the cinema score A minus is pretty good, so maybe it'll have some legs. 
uh, Denzel's movies tend to have merits, and based on the cinema score, he'll probably have a decent multiple. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the 35 million opening is not a bad number. You know, if it opened to that much, I was it it, it did open to that much. I was like, wow, that's a good opening. Yeah, you, you know, the, but we just thought that it could do better. Yeah, and of course, the studio probably expected more because uh, the budget is 90 million, which is about 30 million more than your usual Denzel Washington Antoine Fuqua movie, which tends to be in the 50 to 60 million one. Yeah, you yeah. add the Western element, and um, you know that it bumps up the budget a bit. Yeah, you know the costumes, but. I think the, bu- the horses. <laughs> yeah, I think Chris Pratt probably pumped up the budget a lot because he was coming from Guardians of the Galaxy and Jurassic World. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah, they were expecting a little bit more, like everyone else. But thirty-five million is decent, solid. And it is, and yeah. it is. Uh, don't let the uh, expectation fool you. I mean, you know, we thought it could do more. Everyone thought it could do more. Yeah. But it's uh, open to thirty-five, which is still pretty good. Right. Uh, opening for this movie, and and if it ha- has staying power, like most of uh, Denzel's movies, then you know Denzel yeah, Washington's yeah. movies, then uh, right. it could break a hundred million, which isn't too bad. Right. Right. And because this, uh, you know, this is an action movie, it'll probably do well overseas because mm-hmm. you know if you look at the multicultural casting, yep. this could do well in South Korea because of uh, Lee Fun Hun. Uh huh. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and uh, some of the other actors. Um, so, well, it is doing decently well overseas. It, it's already grossed mm-hmm. 25 million overseas. Yep. And in South Korea, it pulled in, I guess, like, uh, at least the current figure is only about 6.6 6 million. So, win. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good for, for in South Korea. Uh, films tend to be very leggy in South Korea. South Korea is kind of like Japan. They're very leggy. A movie will open at like 6 million and then make 6 million forever until it reaches 100 million <laughs> or more. Okay, so that's actually a solid figure, <laughs> right? Yeah. So anyway, solid all around. I mean, uh, you yeah. know, uh, it's only disappointing uh, if the expectations are are high, and and it it was, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but thirty five men, solid. Right. All right. Let's move on to uh, the number two film, the second uh, wide release of the weekend. It's a animated film by W B Stokes. It did twenty one point eight million uh, at a budget of seventy million. To me, anyway, it's a solid figure for a film, you know, animated <laughs> film budgeted at 70 million. But I think everyone like you uh-huh. were expecting uh, somewhere in the 30 to 40 million range. Yes, yes, yes. I was reading a couple reports. You know, most reports out there are calling it a bomb because they were expecting lofty numbers. Yeah, well, his yeah, it opened at 21, but if it could stay in theaters, it could still do well. Still could recover that 70 million. Yeah, right. What were we predicting? Oh, you want to get into that? Are you sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, you said five. Um, right. Or more. A right. little bit more, okay, but five as a baseline. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you said... And uh, after about 30. Yeah, so you were a lot closer. So you yeah, were... but like you said, everybody was expecting more from Storks, uh, mainly yeah. because, you know, it has kind of like, like all the ingredients for a hit. Mm-hmm. But uh, for some reason, it just pulled in only 21 million, which is, like I said, disappointing. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, it is one of those movies which uh, it is a potential hit. Right, right, right. It has all and the ingredients, like cute characters, uh, targeted, babies. you know, at the family audience, yeah. and there's nothing objectionable to, about it. And yeah, as uh, let me see, good reviews too. Well, decent reviews, sixty four. I mean, yeah, not you know, like at the yeah. uh, Pixar or whatever, but sixty four is okay. Yeah, and I think the cinema score is also an A minus too. For some reason, it couldn't attach to uh, the audience. Right, right. I said it was gonna bomb. And most people are calling it a bomb, but our figures are relative. I'm calling it a 5 million bomb, and most people in the industry are calling it a 22 million bomb. It's not a bomb. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's going to make money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, 22 million on a 70 million is not bad. But because their expectations were so high, they were expecting 40 million, in, and they only ended up doing half of that. So they're calling it a bomb. Like, you know, it's not bad. Because it's a family film, it's going to be leggy. Uh, it'll probably end, it can end up making 70 million. Worldwide, it's already at 40. I yeah. Mean, and, and 18 of that overseas. I mean, it's going to keep, I mean, it's, I mean, the box office take overseas is going to be larger than the domestic take. But I mean, I'm saying it's not going to be a bomb. Yeah, it's not. I think calling it a bomb is a stretching, definitely pre- stretching it. Uh, pre- premature, premature. Yeah. Really premature. The calling it a bomb was mainly based on everyone's inflated expectations and mainly because of the way it was advertised. It was advertised as 
you know, not from the makers of the Lego movie, but from the studio that made <laughs> the Lego movie. <laughs> you know, you I know. don't think people care yeah. what goes before the Lego yeah. movie. Yeah, they just want to mention the Lego movie because it was such a huge hit. Right. They could be like uh, from the people who like the Lego movie. <laughs> well, this is the thing with I guess them attaching it to the Lego movie is like Storks looks nothing like the Lego movie. Yeah, right. And plus, because they promoted it that way, everyone was expecting Lego movie numbers, and this ended up doing you know Storks numbers. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But a nearly 22 million opening on a 70 budget family film is actually not bad. Mm -hmm. Family films tend to do, you know, at least 3x or sometimes 4x the opening. If it does 4x, it's mm -hmm. gonna make more than its budget. You know, if it does 3x, it's gonna get close to its budget. And these films make most of their money on home video. So exactly. So this will probably be a very profitable film for WB, and not the dud that everyone is calling it. Right. Well, I guess lofty expectations, but if it, and it failed to meet it. Yeah. And um, but it's gonna make the studio it's money. Right. Decent. Yeah. Decent opening. I, yeah. I say decent opening, considering if this was a Pixar movie and the budget is like 200 million. Yeah, yeah a, bomb. a bomb. Yeah, absolutely. You know, th this one only costs 70 million. Yeah, which in animation terms is relatively cheap, modest. It's cheap. Unless yeah. you're, unless you're, you work for the people who make the sausage party. Yeah, right. And you know, you can, you can go even cheaper. Yeah. Well, well, these people probably pay their animators over time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, that's a lot of overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right, should we move on? We'll, we'll let, yeah, yeah, we'll let the, the court sort those out. But okay, let's move on to number three, which is uh, occupied by Soli, and in its third weekend, it pulled in thirteen point eight million. Mm -hmm. uh, experienced another lowest drop off, thirty six percent, and um, uh, so far the domestic gross is ninety two million, mm -hmm. uh, but on a budget of sixty, yeah, it's like doing extremely well. Yeah, and holding up really well. Uh, the worldwide figure is at a uh, hundred and twenty seven million. So it's already made double its budget worldwide. Right. This is a movie that probably doesn't translate well overseas because there's a you know a lot of um, it's a drama yeah. pretty much, and uh, you know uh, people might not be aware of the incidents over here. Yeah. Uh, this is more like a character study, and uh, people might not be uh, people overseas might not be interested in this character. I mean, uh, the, the the Captain Solinger or something like that. Yeah, that yeah. You yeah. know, with the Solenberg guy, yeah, the then. pilot. The, Yeah, Solomon, the guy who flew the, yeah. the passenger jet into the Hudson River. I mean, you yeah. know, uh, people overseas might not be aware of him, yeah. so might not be that interested in him. Say, so, you know, or, or what he did. So yeah, it's more of a an American event. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how right. how why the it was reported. I, I'm sure there's some news items on it, but I think it's yeah. just come and go. You know, it's one of those yeah. items. But you know, they, they didn't get the Captain Sully tour through the U.S. <laughs> So then affect them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, moving along to number four is Bridget Jones's Baby. It pulled in about 4.5 million. Uh, in the second weekend, experienced a 47% drop off, which is okay. Uh, so far, it made uh, uh, 16 million. Um, and that's the thing, it didn't open well. Yeah. So uh, worldwide, the worldwide figure is at 84 million, uh, which is already more than twice its, its budget. So it's going to be a profitable film. We'll have to see if it'll. It can crack the 200 million mark because the previous two films have, you know, made. I think the first one was at like 283 million or something. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like it's doing pretty well overseas, but I'm not sure. It, it is, but I'm I'm concerned about the domestic take. Remember, yeah. I said that uh, it probably in its run in the 40 million range or so. At this current rate, no. At this current rate, it, it won't break 40. Yeah, looks uh, like it's slowing down drastically yeah uh, at this well, current even yeah, though the whole yeah yeah at this current way you'll be lucky to do 30. but i guess that's to be expected for a uh, sequel that takes so many years to make yeah that uh, wasn't nearly as popular in the u.s as it is overseas yeah we'll have to see how how well it continues to do overseas even as as it is right now at a budget of just 35 million it's already close over 80 million so it's going to be a profitable film Yeah, it's a bigger film overseas than here, so yeah. Right. Okay, moving along to number five is uh, Snowden. It pulled in 4.1 million um, over the weekend, a uh, second week. Mm -hmm. About 48% drop off. Uh, and so far, domestic gross is 15 million. Yeah, it's gonna lose money. <laughs> you know, it's not the kind of film that, um, that gets a huge draw overseas, um, and there are no overseas uh, figures yet. 
yeah, it, this film will lose money. It doesn't look like it'll make much more than twenty-five million. You know, at the budget of forty right, million. Right, right. Yeah, and and it's a, one of these movies that just doesn't. I don't. I don't see a, a appeal overseas. Just like Sully. Right, right, right. Okay, number six is Blair Witch. It pulled in about three point nine million. It did not drop off that big. What do you mean it did not uh, drop off that 50, big? I mean it dropped big, but it did not drop like big seventy big. percent. Right, only yeah, three. but still sixty percent. Uh, well, fifty nine percent is like you know your typical horror film. No, that's lower than what I expected. I was expected in the, you know, like 60, 70 range. Okay. <laughs> well, it's nearly 60. It's all, right? it's all yeah. about expectations. Right. <laughs> but it's still not good, though. I mean, I'm sure at a budget of just 5 million, after marketing costs and stuff, you'll make money. And I'm sure this will do well uh, on home video. So, but I don't think there will be a Blair Witch 3. And that's is, you know, direct to video. I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, mm. you know, if they could make it for five million, mm. <laughs> and if they could consistently make uh, like twenty-five million or thirty in theaters, I could see them making more. That's true too. Like, like I say, it, it's all about expectations, right? It's all about expectations. I mean, five million, a five million movie making that that much, and then there's the uh, four market and and home video. Hmm, I can I can see it. That's true. It, it is Lionsgate. <laughs> right. <laughs> You, you say that as a bad thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is Lionsgate. <laughs> yeah. They've been known to uh, pay cheaply for distribution rights and uh, because they pay so cheaply for distribution rights, they end up making a profit. And as long as they make a profit, they'll crank out more. It's all about the bottom line. And yeah. There's all those Jason Statham movies. Yep, yep. Mm. <laughs> All right, so um, we wouldn't be surprised if there is another Blair Witch coming to theaters. Uh, right. Okay. All right. All right. Number seven, Don't Breathe, uh, pulled in three point eight million. Uh, so far, it is um, at eighty one million domestic. Worldwide, it's one hundred and twenty million. It's made twelve times its budget so far. We'll definitely see a sequel to to uh, Don't Breathe. Are you Breathe. sure? I, I said I wouldn't go there, but uh, do you think they're gonna milk this? Yeah, that's true. I don't know how else you can do this. It's like, you know, you broke into the house of a blind guy, you know, it's like one of those one film premises. Uh huh. But because it's such a huge hit, maybe they won't do a sequel, but they'll just get everyone who's involved in this, like the director, the writers, and let them make another movie. Right, right. But here's the thing. This is Hollywood. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> what do you think they're going to call it if, if they make a sequel? Uh, it has to be don't breathe too, um, <laughs> <laughs> because 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 uh, you. you know they have to they have to tie it in the, to the success of the first movie, or else like like you said, you know they just rather call it a different movie, right? Mm-hmm. If it's if it's, even if they it's by the same people, if they don't call it that, then they lose out on the um, you know marketing benefits. Yeah, right. So all right, it'll be interesting. All right, number eight, Suicide Squad, uh, still hanging in uh, in the top ten. I put in three point one million in this eighth weekend. Um, uh, domestic gross is 318 and the worldwide take for this movie is 731 so it looks like it's slowing down everywhere so it, it has not opened in China yet is that or it, it won't get open yeah it China. won't open in China okay it won't yeah. Open. yeah so 730 it's uh it's still kind of holding you know steady even though it's not that much it's interesting because after the first few weeks the drop-offs were kind of high but after that it's been kind of leggy not quite sure what it is maybe you know it could just be that hey it's the premise like don't breathe is kind of different you know we haven't seen a superhero movie like this even though the reviews and the initial reaction weren't great well i think it's because there's there's not another uh, marvel movie in theaters that's true too oh it could just be all those uh, horny teenagers staring at Mogo Robbie. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> there are other movies which you could, but like then again, they're not Margot Robbie. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's getting a spin-off. So all of the characters, they didn't spin off any of them except like Harley Quinn, the character that Margot mm-hmm. Robbie plays. So right. Well, that's my that's my theory. I don't I don't know why it's uh, 
<laughs> okay, enough, okay. Let's let's go with that. It's 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 as good as any. It's as good as any. So let's go with that. Margot Robbie right. made this movie. All right. All right. Uh, number nine. When the bow breaks. Uh, speaking of um, you know that. <laughs> right. Put in two point five million. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this third weekend, and uh, it's quietly making near thirty million. And you know, this is one of these erotic thrillers, which mm-hmm. um. We thought would do better, but I I guess there's a limit to people watching kind of like the same movies with the same premise, with the same cast, <laughs> yeah, with the same cast, or it could be the people, or it could be it doesn't have Margot Robbie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or, or like well, or like you said, you know, it, the people who goes to uh, who go to these movies or women, and you can't have just one man; you have to have a couple men. No, you no no a, a love triangle oh, with two men okay. instead of a love triangle with two women. Why? Know? Why? Yeah, exactly. You need the men. You need more beefcakes. Oh, you know. I see. I see. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll see, we'll see if your theory is right. Maybe, maybe they can do another one and do a love triangle and have two guys. And and you know they will they they they're cranking these out. They will do another one. <laughs> right. It's still profitable. <laughs> with the same people. Yeah. With the same people. I mean, it's still profitable. Just uh, right. We didn't do as well as the previous two films in the same genre. Right, right. I mean, ten million you're making twenty six. I mean, when it ends its run, it's probably gonna be what thirty, 30 yeah, thirty five. Yeah, and that's like three times its budget. I, I think if anyone gets those numbers, they, they'd be pretty happy. And these movies will probably do great on video. Yep, yep. And because of the premise, really. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, number ten. Uh, something completely different. Kubo and the Two Strings uh, did one million uh, over the weekend. It uh, looks like they're taking this film out of theaters. Uh, the drop off is uh, 57%. It's made about 46 million at a budget of 60 million. So kind of a disappointing figure. Not kind of. It is a disappointing figure. The uh, worldwide figure is at uh, about 59 million. So kind of, the worldwide mm-hmm. figure is about equal to the budget so far, but. Um, that's not good. You you know the worldwide figure should be at least twice its budget uh, to break even. But you know this is the kind of film that we'll we'll still have to wait and see until it launches. I think it's probably getting a slow rollout uh, in the rest of the world, mm-hmm. or not. Oh, it's open in a bunch of places already. So um, oh, it hasn't opened in Japan or China yet, which are pretty huge uh, markets. Oh, let me see, and and not South Korea. I mean, I could see this playing really well in uh, Asian territories, and it hasn't opened in the uh, three biggest Asian territories. Yeah, uh, but we'll have to see, though. I mean, it could be one of these movies that's just uh, not appealing at all to them. Latch on everywhere. Yeah, 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 that that fails to latch on. Yeah, and um, you know, as we said, we can see this movie in its run, uh, at least here, domestic, in the fifty million range, right? Yeah, Uh, which is kind of one of the lower uh, Leica films. Yeah, so right. That's it for the top 10. Let's move on to the new openings. We have uh, three wide releases. We have Deep Water Horizon, which uh, stars uh, Mark Wahlberg. And, you know, it, it is about the explosion at the, one of the oil wells called Deep Water Horizon that kind of pollutes the, the Gulf. Mm-hmm. In, I think, is it Louisiana, is it? Or somewhere. In, yeah. in the Gulf, in the, in, the, in the U.S. Anyway. And then there's the comedy Masterminds. Mm-hmm. And then Tim Burton's uh, Miss... Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Yeah, which is kind of like Tim Burton's uh, version of X Men. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this. Uh, which film do you want to start that with? Well, let's go with Deep Water. Yeah, so it's not a. I mean, we heard about it, but it's probably not as uh, well known of an event as Soli, for instance. Well, no, 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 no. It, it's more well known because it polluted the water. It was in the news for a long time. Uh, there was this huge payout, and uh, you know, it causes very. Uh, I mean, uh, BP, the oil company, took a, a reputation hit. Mm-hmm. The CEO got ousted, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is big. I mean, I think it's bigger worldwide than uh, you know the that jet landing. But does that make a good movie? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you, you could be right. I think on a worldwide level, it's bigger. But I think nationally, well, it's hard to say because something like Soli is more like a hero, a you know, national hero thing. 
and deep water horizon is more like oily, which you know. Well, it's a disaster picture, right? Yeah. It is, uh, you know, leading leading up to this huge explosion and people dying and you know jumping into the water. So you know, one of the biggest disaster, uh, I guess, in human history, really. So. Is it? Well, <laughs> it's big. It, it it causes like a you know the oil that got leaked into the ocean yeah. causes all this uh, damage and you know so. Right, it's huge. Right, okay. One of the right. biggest oil leaks. But the thing is, like, do people care? You know, that that's the thing. It's like people care yeah. enough to go and watch this movie. Right. I mean, an oil leak isn't as, as exciting as, you know, <laughs> something like Soli where, you know... Yeah, someone... landing the plane in water. Yeah, yeah, and saving all these people. This is a team-up, again, between Mark Wahlberg and director Peter Berg. Uh, they were in Lone Survivor. Yeah, which did uh, really well. Um, I think that film opened in the uh, 40 million wins. Uh, I think 38, 38 million. 38 yeah. million, yeah. Which is good. Which is pretty good. The thing is, uh, can they do it again? Based on the early reviews, it seems like possibly y y yes, because for Peter Burke, I mean, the reviews are 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is pretty well reviewed. It's better than I, I had expected. I was thinking this will be your typical Peter Burke action movie, um, which will probably uh, not get decent reviews. Uh, but this is getting decent reviews, and uh, especially in the action thriller genre or disaster genre, it's pretty good. Well, you know, I mean, it's, I think he got sometimes he got handed um, uh, some cars that he needs to play, like Battleship. You yeah, know, yeah, right. Like, through big, you know, like, do you want to turn down that 200 million budget? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, you know, since this is kind of like based on a true story, I. You know, I kind of expect the reviews to be good, but like I, like I said, you know, are people interested enough to uh, watch this disaster pick? Right? Uh, so yeah. that, that's the concern here. You know, it's not about the reviews. It's not about whatever. It is about the the subject matter. So you say yes. Um, I say yes because you know, Mark Wahlberg in an action disaster movie is you know it's kind of in his forte. Uh, and Peter Berg is pretty good at directing these kind of movie on a technical level. And also, even though uh, Lone Survivor had pretty good reviews, 75%, this one is even better review. Uh, it's at 86%. So with all that, I'm thinking it, I'm thinking uh, it can do pretty well. I like a number. 28 million. 27 million. 27 million yeah. wow oh, okay so uh, you know what uh, you know after saying that and after what i said you know i'm gonna go a bit higher than you oh okay 30. okay 30. that's not much higher <laughs> all right, all right you're well going but, but it's still higher i mean yeah. you, ex you you expect me me to go lower than you right but oh because of all the three <laughs> things i said yeah. right yeah okay. <laughs> well i'm going 27 just because yeah like you said you know the because all these other great things, the only thing is, you know, do people want to watch, you know, something about an oil leak? Exactly. But I, I'm saying it could fail to meet the 30 as well. So, you know, right. but I'm just going with 30, a number. Let's start with 30, but then I, I could see it making lower than that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with 27. So we kind of agree on that. Yeah, right. That, that's true. Okay. So how about we move on to Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which you said is kind of like um, Tim Burns' um, X-Men movie. Yeah, it's kind of a weird mix. It's kind of dark and weird, and uh, on Rotten well, Tomatoes, yeah, you know, on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the reviews is at a forty-seven percent so far, with just seventeen reviews. Um, Tim Burton's been kind of uh, on a downward uh, slope uh, lately, box office-wise, and even a uh, good review-wise, his films have haven't been that well reviewed and haven't been doing that well commercially. And this looked like. I'm kind of biased here because I'm a Tim Burton fan and, you know, I'll watch it, but I'm not sure yeah. uh, other people are as interested. True. And here's another thing, right? Um, this, the movie, mm -hmm. the movie's biggest name is probably Sam Jackson, you know? Yeah. And there's but, Eva Green you know, and there's Judy Dance. There's Wuber right? Everett. But who goes to watch their movies? The thing is, and there's Terrence Stamp uh, too, and there's all these great actors. Um, so I was expecting right. better reviews, but you know. Right, right, but this is Tim Burton, right? I mean, yeah. you know, he has all these great actors in his movies before. Yeah. And uh, Eva Green is his current muse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the lead actor here is Asia Butterfield. Mm -hmm. So, like you, I'm not that high on the movie. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's Tim Burton. His movies uh, are going to look good. Yeah. 
but for this one, I don't think it'll probably do that well at the box office, especially with the reviews it got. It's getting yeah. Uh, so what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm th- I'm <laughs> just gonna I'm probably. thinking ten. Yeah. Yeah, same 10, here. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm thinking ten. Uh, let's see. What what's the budget? Did we say the budget for the movie? Uh, I think it's pretty high because ten one doesn't make uh, cheap movies. <laughs> Especially yeah, like it is, it is. Yeah, it is a superhero movie, really. Yeah. Um, wow. How much is the budget? We don't know. Okay. All right. But we can write the headline now. Uh, Miss Peregrine's bombed at the box office. There you go. <laughs> All right. How about Masterminds? It was called uh, Loomis um, something before, right? Oh, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but when they made it, it was called uh. Ferris Loomis or something? Oh, hold on, let me take a look. Oh, 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 here we go. Okay, so this movie was called Loomis Fargo before. Oh, okay. It's based on a a true event mm-hmm. uh, uh, about the robbery of a uh, you know uh, people who who work um, who like I guess like uh, who, who drive these security trucks. Oh, okay, and that okay. delivers money uh, from okay. one place to another. Okay, okay. And they decide to you know to rob a truck. Okay. <laughs> uh, Masterminds is a much better title. Obviously, uh, I I don't know about that masterminds. Uh, it, it's it sounds like that um that other animated movie. Oh yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah it, it does you know? it does. It's you know it's like it's generic, but when you have a when you have a title like Loomis whatever you know um, oh. <laughs> you, you know yeah, a generic title things, a yeah. generic title is you know in in those instances I would rather off of the generic title. Okay. Yeah. Um, I actually thought the the trailer. Uh, it's kind of funny, you know. I actually think the trailer is kind okay. of funny. It has all these SNL alumni, you know. It has people who have been in huge uh, comedic hits, you know, like Zach Galifianakis. You go mm-hmm. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with what you say. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and there's you know there's a uh, Kristen Wiig, there's there's Jason uh, Speckies, and there's Owen Wilson. Leslie Jones, Kate McKinnon, so you know a great cast of comedians. There are no reviews on Rotten Tomatoes yet. I, you know the trailer is kind of funny, and I'm not. Are there any comedies in the top ten? Well, unless you call Bridget Jones's baby. Yeah, yeah that's true. But so may, hey, maybe maybe the market's uh, right for a comedy, a broad comedy. Kind of broadish. I mean, but the thing is, it's like uh, this movie is kind of like Starsky's and Hutch, which. Pretty much kind of stars, uh, you know, has Owen Wilson in it, right? Yeah. It's uh, has this a uh, weird retro vibe. Yeah. You, you know, has like the '80s look, and uh, I don't know. It, it, I have mixed feeling about this movie. Yeah, I do have mixed feelings, but you know, like it seems like a decent, mindless comedic film to go to. Yeah, and here, here's the thing, though, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Starsky's and Hutch uh, opened to twenty eight million, and that was back in two thousand four. Uh, yeah, isn't that the movie about wait with Owen Wilson, right? Yeah, Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. Uh, it's kind of like one of these old seventies uh kind of action movie, you know? Right, right. That's when both of them were still big, though. But this one, each of these guys, like you know, Zach Galifianakis <laughs> from the uh, uh the Hangover movies, and then Jason uh, Sudeikis, you know, did a bunch of these uh you know um uh what was it. Bad boss or right. horrible boss? Yeah, horrible right. boss, horrible boss. But bosses okay, and, and here, here's the, here's another data point. Mm-hmm. There was this 2010 movie that's kind of like star stars uh, Kristen Wiig, um, you know, I guess the same people, Owen Wilson, mm-hmm. called Mac- MacGruber. Oh, and that, and that kind that? of tank, yeah. That Will tank. Forte, it tanked. It it has a worldwide gross of only nine million. Yeah, but that didn't have to cast like this one. No, that one. <laughs> I, I, the, I, True. Who's, you know who star who starred in that one? Oh, Will Forte, Kristen Wiig, Ryan Philippe, uh, Val Kilmer. Oh, Maya Rudolph. Oh, Kristen yeah. Wiig's in that one too, yep. huh? Yeah. So that one yep, didn't yep. do too well. I think this one will do better than that one. Uh, I, I don't agree. Know. I agree. I mean, <laughs> that, that one op- open to four million. I think this will do better. Uh, ten million. Ten million. Hmm. It's tough for me to say. I whatever number I come out with could be low let me see if uh, I think it could probably do around Zoolander 2 numbers you mean like 15? open to I think 
Uh, Zoolander 2 opened to about 13.8 million. Okay. So let me say, let me go somewhere between you and that. Let's go with, um, uh, hell, 12. <laughs> That's not. All right, so well, you know, so we pretty much I, agree on every one of these films. Yeah, see, see, the thing is, if I if I say ten, I probably agree with you with ten, but yeah. I'd say you know could probably could do better. So not yeah. much better. Not right, much so we better. kind of agree. Deep Water Horizon, we're gonna it's gonna be around thirty million. Uh, Miss Peregrine's Home of All Peculiar Children, um, we're thinking ten. Was it? Yep, 10, 10 million. Yeah, and then about the same for for masterminds. Yeah, so we pretty much think that a Deep Water Horizon is going to be the biggest movie this weekend. Mm. Uh, with the other two kind of you could say underperforming, um, you know, relative to the people involved, I guess the talent. Right. I'm not sure what the budget is for those films. Like, well, I mean, uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is probably pretty high. Because of Tim Burton, he doesn't make cheap movies. Right. At least uh, he hasn't made cheap movies in a while. Uh, but Masterminds look like it could be one of these films where everyone did it for you know cheaply, and you know it could turn a decent profit even if it made ten million. So we'll see. All right, then that's it for this week. Uh, come back next week and see how we did.